Hi everybody. Today I'm going to attempt a repair that is discouraged by both amateur mechanics and professionals. It is very unlikely that the repair will be successful, and even if it does appear to be satisfactory initially, the chances of failure in the future are very, very high. Sounds like just the job for me. The repair I'm talking about, of course, is sealing a crack in a plastic radiator housing. This is the radiator from my 1999 Ford Ranger, and for about the past 30,000 miles, I've been living with a constant small waterfall down the side of the case here. And today, I've decided to take action. I have a few options for remedying the situation that I have here. The one that comes most highly recommended, of course, is throwing this radiator in the trash and just buying a new one. But because I'm thrifty and curious and have a little bit of time on my hands, that's not an option for me. I've seen repairs to these types of cracks done in the past, as I mentioned, with very, very low success rates. And they've utilized anything from JB Weld epoxy to duct tape to plastic weld kits. What I'm going to do is a little bit different and much cheaper than most of those. I'm going to attempt to remelt the plastic around the crack and insert new material as I'm doing that to create kind of a plastic weld. And I'm going to be doing this with the same material that the radiator was initially manufactured out of. Here's a closer view of the radiator just as it came out of the truck a few minutes ago. I have a crack that starts about right here and goes down way below this inlet spout down to about right here. And if I go like this, you can probably see it. And it's just been getting progressively worse for a while now. So the next thing I need to do is clean up this problem area of the radiator from all this accumulated rust goop so I can see what I'm working with and start the repair. I finished cleaning up the radiator around the work area and I've made a couple of discoveries. The first one is that I don't just have a singular crack that starts here, travels around the inlet and goes down toward the bottom of the radiator, but rather I have one crack that starts here, goes to about right here. I have a few cracks here that I marked with a sharpie because they're very, very small. And in addition to that, I have two cracks over here. One that starts here and goes to about right here, and another one right here to finish things off. The other discovery that I've made is that the material that the radiator is manufactured from does not stand up very well to years and years of hot water running through it and the other demands of the environment of a radiator. Evidence of this can be found right here on this inlet, which is the hottest part of the radiator. This is where hot water from the engine comes into the radiator. And I noticed when I was cleaning up the area here that this plastic is very, very brittle and doesn't have very much structural integrity. As a matter of fact, if I take the knife here, I mean, with hardly any force at all, this comes right off. And the same can be seen if I take this little poker here and push on it. It's just very, very weak. And as I travel down the spout here into this area, which is also very hot, but cooler than right here, and I probe that, it's not quite as bad. It's still kind of brittle and grainy, but it's not as bad as right here. Compare that to the outlet of the radiator, which is over on the other side here. And when I take my utility knife to that, with the same force or even 
more, it just barely nicks the surface. And I can hardly push through it at all with my poker. This tells me that repairing the cracks might just be futile, it might be a fool's errand, because this whole area of the radiator is probably weaker than it should be. However, I'll continue on with it, I'll see how it turns out, and I'll also keep tabs on the repair in the future so you'll know how it withstands the test of time. The tools that I'm going to use for this repair are very basic and are probably in most workshops already. I need a wire brush for cleaning, also some type of scraper or razor blade, a soldering iron. This soldering iron is a little bigger than the type you might use for electronics, but I think it will be good for this because I need quite a bit of heat. I'm also going to use a propane torch to preheat the plastic. The other thing that I'm going to need is a hacksaw. The hacksaw is what I'm going to use to salvage some filler material for my repairs. If you remember, I said I was going to use the same material for the repairs that the radiator was originally manufactured with, and to do that, I'm going to look to this mounting protrusion right here, and I'm just going to make a cut right here so I can get a nice little welding rod of plastic to fill the cracks with. And there are my two welding rods. I took them from the cold side of the radiator in hopes that they will be of better quality. And also, if this side has more strength than the other, it should fare better with a weakened support bracket here. Before starting the actual repair, I need to dry this whole area out and also heat it up a bit. I'll start by drying it off with some compressed air. And I'm also going to put a little bit of heat to it with the torch. But as I do this, I'm going to frequently give it a little bit of a poke in the hot area here to make sure it's not getting too soft too soon. So I'll start heating up the problem area. I think the first crack that I'm going to tackle is the one that starts here and runs around to about right here. So that's the area that I'm going to focus on with the heat. I believe I've now heated this area sufficiently that there won't be any water contamination in my welds and I'm going to start melting the plastic just a little bit right here where this crack starts. So if I move that spout a little bit I can see that the crack starts right about here so that's where I'll start working. And as I haven't attempted this before, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. I think I want to melt the area just to the sides of the crack as well as the crack itself and at the same time put in a little bit of extra material. Soldering iron melts it really well.
Well, there's my first attempt. The fumes aren't too bad, however, you should do this in a well-ventilated area. I'm going to reposition the camera now, and we will continue. Okay, moving around the bend here. I'm just kind of putting that extra plastic rod underneath the soldering iron so that it just kind of pushes that new material into the crack. I'm trying to kind of blend everything together as well. What I fear is that this won't bond because the bottom material isn't as hot as the new material. Now this area that I'm messing with, I couldn't really see a visible crack, but I could tell the plastic was very porous, so I'll just kind of work some new plastic in there for good measure. Okay, the first area of repairs is complete. Now I'll move around to the other side. On this side of the radiator, I have two cracks to repair. One that goes from right here to right here. You see it when I move this fan shroud bracket. And a little hairline crack down here as well. I'm really trying to be conscious of keeping the radiator plastic hot while I get new plastic from my filler rod. That's hot. Watch out for that.
Okay, I think that should just about do it. For better or worse. I'll let this dry for just a minute or two and then reinstall it in the truck and see what happens. I've got everything installed again. Water is in the radiator and the engine is up to operating temperature and so far, so good. This is hardly a successful repair though because the true test will be to see how it performs over time. This area experiences fairly drastic temperature increases and decreases throughout normal driving of the truck. And just to recap with what I think are some key points in making this repair successful, which could be right or wrong because I don't know if the repair is successful or not, but anyway, keep the area clean that you're going to do the repairs on, wash it down, scrape it down to the bare plastic if you need to, use a wire brush or whatever to make the area clean so you don't get any contaminants in with the plastic that you're going to melt. Keep it dry as well. I noticed that with my radiator it took quite a bit of time to get it completely dry and that's where the heat really comes in handy. Use a heat gun or a torch or even a blow dryer if you need to but make sure no water seeps back up through the crack when you're finished drying it off and heating it up because if water mixes with that melted plastic probably not the greatest thing and fill material you need good fill material snip it off of a little part of the radiator that isn't really important and use that to reinforce and fill the cracks and also penetration and a good mix of the old and new plastic. For instance, if this is a cross section of the radiator plastic, and there's your crack that you need to fill, make sure you melt here and here in a nice little V pattern. And then while this is hopefully still melted, get some of that new material in here and mix it all around in there too so you have a nice thick little spot of plastic weld to seal that up and then try to feather it out into this plastic here as well so it's a nice smooth transition. I tried to do that with my radiator as you might have seen it was tough to keep the original material melted and at the same time feed new material in because this is melted and this is dry so it's not a perfect method but hopefully I won't ever have to do it again either. Today is now Monday it's the day after I did the repair but I haven't uploaded the video yet because I had to edit it and make it watchable. We took the truck on about a 50 mile round trip drive today and I'm happy to report that I haven't seen any leaks or any evidence of impending failure on my repair. It looks pretty good on the top here as well as down the side. So that's a very 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 small vote of confidence for the job. However, it is a vote of confidence nonetheless. I'll try to keep you updated on the status of this repair just to give you an idea if it's a permanent fix or just a temporary band-aid. For reference, the repair was initially performed at 234,675 miles and I've since put on about 50 miles so things look good so far. Hopefully in the future the radiator odds will be forever in my favor. Thanks for watching.